I've got a new idler arm for it. This is the old one. It's just basically there to stop the drag link flapping around the breeze. And the one I've got has sort of a rubber end on one side and also this urethane type um, bush on the other which comes with its own, with its own special grease. Um, so I'm going to take that off. Actually, I might lubricate it first. And um, it's sort of a white, I don't know, it's a gelatin type stuff. And they stipulate in the instructions not to use it on the rubber part. Um, rubber parts normally have a, a um, either no grease, oh, I've got a message, or a, um, a, a specific rubber grease on them. But let's put that on there now and I'll take this off. Um, these are quite confusing in that they uh, they look like, like like they can go both ways, but they can only really go one. I think that goes that way. I think. Tighten that up and stick a split pin through it. Okay. I always like to put the split pins in so the head of it's facing forward of the car. I've got to put these caster rods in there. You can see I've had all the bolts re sort of plated and it all looks pretty good. There's a um a washer that sort of fits over here and there's a male and female um, bush. Now the instructions show the female half fitting in from behind which means your male one has to go through the top and I'm not sure why it would have made more sense that the male went in and that way it could sort of locate up in there. I don't know if you can see up there where my thumb is. But um, I'm just going to aid it with a tiny bit of rubber grease and there's also a, uh, a steel sleeve that goes in there so we'll start putting those in now sort of push that over whoops and then in then locate in the lower control arm there we go. just going to tighten up these mounts here it's worth remembering that this sort of splined part here it's like a wheel stud actually mounts itself quite firmly in the lower control arm to remove the chance of any sort of movement that shouldn't be there I'm just going to nip these up and afterwards there's a, a sort of a pin that goes in the bottom of the bolts. Oh, there's a, uh, a little hole in the bottom of each of these studs where you put a, uh, a pin, there's a sort of a little pin that goes through there. The camera still works, it's just face planted it into the ground. Um, so we'll bang a bit of this rubber grease around here now around this male part here and we'll sort of stick it in. I don't know if you're supposed to use rubber grease, it's just a habit I've always had, I've always used it. Um, it just helps things sort of slip together nicely and it also might um, just eliminate the chance of any real you know nasty squeaks and that sort of thing so I'll we'll just put that in and we'll move the arm up and then we can get him home. Put that over and I can sort of, there's also a pin that goes through the radius rod there so I'll just put that on and tighten this up tentatively. It's all going to have to be adjusted when the car has a wheel alignment. Um, but that's sort of basically how you stick your radius rods in. That way there's no fore and aft movement on the lower control arm, <clears throat> which is particularly important if I want to put the wheels on with an engine in it to push around. Because even pushing around the workshop um, without those on, but with the weight of an engine in, could damage the lower arms or at least damage the bushes in them. Well, I've got to check out the um, cross members before I get ready to put the engine in. I'm not ready to put the engine in yet, I've got to finish the front end, but before I do, I've got to look at these cross members. Now, this is the original one out of the car. It was a six-cylinder um, affair, and it's got bra bracketing for cables, handbrake cables, this sort of thing. Apparently, they uh, get in, out in the way of um, the V8 exhaust and so forth, but having said that, it's got the two cutouts for exhaust. I can't see it being too much different. This one here is either XC or XDV8, I'm not sure. But I bought my little XD over. This doesn't normally live here. And it's a little bit neglected, the poor old thing. I've got to, it's running, not running too well. I've got to give it a, um, 
they've got to give it a service and tune. Um, but that's the one that has the Casefield C4 that I was rattling on about in the last video. And it's a gem of an old thing. It's I love this car. My father bought it when I was 12 years old. So we've had it in the family from you. But um, I need to get underneath it and have a look at, um, at what the uh, transmission cross member looks like. Now I am going to take the engine out of this at some stage. Um, I'm going to put a new booster and uh, master on it. Also the brake lines are all rusty. I don't like that. Um, so I'm going to give the brakes a complete overhaul. I have this uh, Virgin Bore 351 engine here and I'm going to swap them round. I know I should put the numbers correct engine back. I'm going to take this out, stick it on the engine stand, do a bit of work on it. I probably will put it back just because it's the right one for the car. Uh, but I just want to swap them over at some stage in the future. Certainly not yet. I've got my hands full with this bloody thing. But I want to have a look at the cross member and how the handbrake's set up on this car because it is different to the XW. I thought it'd be the same, but it's not. And there's your reason why I forgot what these look like underneath. It's got the um, handbrake attached instead of it going to the cross member. It's actually attached to the subframe rail and the lever. Yeah, the lever is too. Oh, it's completely different. So that cross member I've got um, for the XDXC or whatever is, is no good. It's, I'll have to use the original one. There's the, the transmission and you can see it's actually a Casefield C4. I'm not going to go into Casefield and Panfield C4s again. I rattled on about that in the old one, in the other video, sorry, the one we've just done. But this is the correct transmission for the car. It's the one that came with the car when it was new. And the only time it was taken out is when I overhauled it all those years ago. But it's interesting to sort of have a look at it because i would forgotten what it looked like. I'm not sure if you can see it in this light, but these doors I've got to start working on I have started working on them actually and they're all crow's foot it's all the paint has to come off I've actually made a start and I've got these two doors and the guard in bare metal the other guard uh, is completely rust free it was rusted down the bottom here and it had that whole section putting in so I've cleaned this one up a little bit of extra work I've sort of got to get in here and clean it a bit more I've just sort of stripped it back with a paint stripper I did it yesterday and today when I got up there was a haze of rust all over it so I've just stuck the oxidine on just to try and stop that happening um, this door here which one is it yeah this one here is absolutely perfect there's not a dent in sight um, and there's no rust absolutely no rust it's really really good I haven't done around here yet I've got to still strip that this one on the other hand is interesting in that it's creased up here or at least it's been pushed in there it may have been straightened and that had filler in it and there's also a, a two spots one here and one here so I'll have to weld those up there's still a bit of filler there but I'll take that out and weld those up so that's all looking good so the back doors are completely rust free the two front guards are completely rust free the shells completely rust free um, and I'm now in the process I've just begun to strip this door out here so there's a lot of work to do there it's a mess and you can see the quality of paint that's actually jam that's enamel that stuff it's absolutely horrendous to get off and um, it's causing me a bit of grief haven't stripped the bonnet yet uh, but this bonnet looks really really good there's no rust behind it in the frame it's all looking really really clean little bit of crow's footing at the front here so that's all going to have to come off um, the scuttle I bought another scuttle the original one was hail damaged and also given that it had that crow's footed enamel it's just ridiculously difficult to strip between these sorts of areas here so I just bought another one well, that's a nice straight white one and of course that guard I've already etched it and filled it but I haven't rubbed it back but I know what's behind there and it's it's, it's flawless the only other thing is the boot um, the boot frame is perfect so I think I'm going to have with no shadow of doubt an absolutely rust free XW pretty manky looking calipers um, this is the one where um, the piston barely fit in I've got that moving nice and freely but in fact this is an early or a later type piston this is the wrong piston for it and a lot of them um, a lot of people fit these and they're actually incorrect and the right one 
from putting two new pistons anyway is just a couple of thousands of an inch smaller. You can virtually not see it, you can only see it when you measure it uh, with a mic. So I've got a couple of new pistons to go in these. And these brakes have been used for a long time, these calipers. They're very, very old. New banjo bolts, all this sort of stuff. But it just pays to put, given that they're cast and they do rust, we've got to clean it all out and just run a 3 8 fine tap through there. Um, and it'll go in quite easily, just so that we're putting our new banjo bolts in. Um, probably should use a lubricant on this, but... And that looks lovely now, so we'll just check our banjo goes in there nicely. That's cool. The new hoses are quite are quite thick, so um, it just means that by the time we put our copper washers on, that'll look really, really good, and it'll just sort of sit in there nicely. Now the correct rubber hoses for under here, around sixty dollars each. I've just got these aftermarket ones. These are uh, the same quality as the, as the correct ones, but they're thirty dollars. And the reason for that. Um, well, I don't know if it's the reason, but they have actually have an incorrect bracket, so you have to re-drill in the chassis arm for it, and I didn't want to do that. Um, I had got my original XW drum brake brackets um, plated, and I've put those in. So it's just a matter of taking this clip out here, um, and then you work, you know, you sort of got a, a nice hose that'll fit inside here, and you can attach it that way, and it'll still do the same job. And it it saves you thirty dollars a side, so sixty dollars is a pretty good saving. And so you can just sort of see there on full lock that it's all good. And I've just sort of got it mocked in, and I mean it's not going to turn like that unless it's a shopping trolley, but it's only going to go back about this far or so. But it's nice and tidy, and every bit as good as the other installs, in my opinion. So that means I can start taking all this off and building up the rest of the front end. All right, I'm just making a gasket to go behind the backing plate. The OEM ones were foam and they just sort of sat behind there to stop any grease or whatnot leaking out behind. Um, I'm just being a misery tight ass and making my own out of oil jointing. Oil jointing's about 10 cents for a five kilometer roll. It's really, really cheap. Not that cheap. And so I'm just gonna go behind here and mark it up so that I can cut it out and uh, then I can put the backing plate on. But just in doing that yourself, they're about 15 bucks for the right ones, 15 bucks a pair. So just in the brake lines and these little gaskets, I've just saved 75 bucks on my front end. Beauty. Whoops. Love a new set of rotors, which apparently now come in gun barrel finish. And I don't know if that's because, I mean, if the car doesn't stop, you want to shoot yourself, but I just had a bit of a squizzy at this before. These are standard rotors. The original ones have a separate hub, where these ones are one piece, and apparently a lot better. But they've got the slimy residue on them to stop them rusting. You can see there it's all one piece. Where the original type, where the original type actually has a separate hub. Um, so concourse people would want these, and people doing GTs, tribute cars and that, would want those ones. I didn't, I just wanted these ones. You can use pretty much anything to whoop, clean these up, this is just a bit of thinner. Um, petrol thinner, wax and grease remover, anything you want. It just cleans this protective coating off before we fit our brakes. I don't know why they want a gunmetal finish. I think they look better when they're bright. Still, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to pop it there like that. And it hasn't got the bearings or anything in, so we've got to fit those as well. Always very important to check with your new stuff. The races are right the seals right and also against the stub axle because don't forget there are three types of stub axles that fit these cars. I've just taken this one out of the um, old disc and that disc was never on this car, it was drum brake. And we're just sort of tapping it in using, just to make sure, using an old outer race, and you just got to make sure you don't damage the hardening around the edge, it's actually quite a, you should really press them in, but I'm getting it going in nicely actually. You can see the actual tone of it changes when you're seated. So I'm going to plonk this in, punch that bearing out. There you go, set of batters installed. Now we've got to pack these bearings and install them and also lubricate this and install this as well. And this is always 
a bit of an unfavourable job with some people. You're basically pushing the outer part on until you see grease start to pop out through here. Always use high temperature bearing grease. If you don't, with the temperatures in the hubs, they can um, the grease can liquefy and you can end up with just a, a ruddy mess everywhere. Not just that, it's it's also quite dangerous. I always run my finger around there like that to make it nice and tidy. And as the old saying goes, you never put a seal in dry. We must do that as well. And so I'm just going to run some grease, well, this is messy, around here. This is a steel case seal, so we have to put it in quite carefully. Right, yeah, basically we've just got to tighten it up to about 30 newton meters, swing it around, back it off quarter of a turn. And that'll give it enough uh, free play when the bearings heat up so that they don't cook. And of course we can just stick this thing over. We've got to get it in the right spot, which is a pain sometimes. Like that. They call me Mr. T, because I'm drinking tea. Yeah, okay, shit joke. Mm. Here we have a lovely Kelsey Hayes overhaul caliper. I'm going to rebuild the other one now. I've actually got this wrong. The caliper goes like this, and I thought the nipple faced up in the car, which it doesn't. Uh, the reason for that is because it gets its, uh, it's ported down to this point here, which is the lowest point. You don't want that. It has to be ported, ported to the top point. So if your caliber's like that, you'll never ever be able to bleed it. So I've got to take this apart again and just swap it over. Whenever you put rubbers in, you use rubber grease. This is the proper PBR rubber grease. Um, obviously used for anything rubber, so don't use it on condoms, that's just manky. And we'll just put these slides in. And um, it's just like a jammy sort of gelatin stuff. We'll just whack a bit of grease around there to help it through. And just push it in. And they just sort of push in, then you can <clears throat> grab it from the other side and just give it a bit of a yank just to make sure it's seated properly, just like that. So the first thing we want to do <clears throat> is a nice caliper painted in cast iron exhaust manifold paint. I figured it would look good, so I'm just going to give it a bit of a, a lube around where the seals go with, of course, rubber grease. No other type of grease will do. These are Kelsey Hayes. These People are asking, oh, I think 350 to 450 for these with rebuild kits. And rebuild kits are 20 bucks, they're not much. I had to get pistons as well, they were about $20 each. Because um, they were the wrong ones. So we'll stick this kit in there. All the kit is, is there's two caliper slides and we have two seals. One, of course, is the dust seal. Oh, there it is. I thought I'd lost it for a minute. And this is the important one. This is the, the piston seal. So I'm just going to give that a bit of a lube up. And put it in nice and carefully. And it only goes in one way. Just got to make sure it's not twisted. And it's actually harder to twist these than to put them in straight. So I'm just going to put my finger on there. And if you can see in there. And pop it in and run my finger around to, to install it. And that'll sit just nice. There we go. It's all nice and straight. I can see it. I can feel it. That's good. Don't forget mechanics feel more than they see. A bit more grease around there. And we're ready to take a look at our piston. Now when you buy these pistons, they come with a, a, a sort of a lubricant on them, an oil type residue just to stop them rusting. So I'm going to hit that with brake clean, um, a solvent based brake cleaner, and um, clean it off. Brake cleaner, you can pay $7 for this or, you know, a lot of money for another type. And I'll just blow that off with compressed air now. Beautiful. 
just going to whack a bit of grease up around the top part and that'll let me slide this boot over like that and then we can sort of pull his pants down oh I'm slippery come on over the edge like that and that way I can get this part in here I might just put a bit more grease around here because that's the first point of contact where it meets the seal inside the caliper so I'm going to put a bit of grease in there and then I'm going to plonk that down just so it's overhanging just like that and then of course we've got to get it in and this can be tedious so there's the first rib and the second rib the second rib's got the piston in it or well, got the piston seal in it I'm going to do it slightly skew it use my finger just to run this curtain in and that'll sit in that rebated spot in front of where the seal is and I'm just going to get a light so I can see precisely how right I am so it's in there so what we're going to do now is push the piston in and we have to be very careful with that because if we get it skewed we're in strife and then as you go down, if you go down, then that dust seal will automatically run into where the um, rebate on the piston is. There we go. Now I've got to mount it here. And remember, the nipple faces down. So I know that's up, the nipple's down, so it goes in like that. Before I do anything, I'm just going to slide that in. It'll go in. There we go. Just going to put our lovely piece on the backing plate. That's sort of like a spring as well, that thing. Now you could use a molly grease on these. Um, my experience with molly grease is brilliant stuff, but the stuff I've got tends to. Um, it separates and the last thing you want is an oily residue running down over your brakes so I'm just going to pop that in and I'll tighten these up in a moment Let's stick a bit of Loctite in there and there too and uh, tighten them up Radio so far so good Let's stick a nipple in I had all this stuff plated it costs absolutely nothing when you stick it in the a box full of other parts that you intend to get plated um, and it just gives it so much nicer look I mean even the ones you find online that um, are $400 or so or more just don't look nearly as good as that I mean that's the duck's guts isn't it so we've got this weird clip arrangement here which sort of feeds in and twists around then the inner pad, which is just this little guy here, that just sort of sits in there over a, a leg. So we'll plop that on the car and then I'll put these, um, I suppose these are anti-rattle springs. We'll put those on. So we can just slip these over now. We hope they slip over. There we go. I'll stick some bolts in. I'm just going to put it, because these are plated, I'm just going to put a tiny bit of grease there just to stop them galling. Looking pretty good, isn't it? There was actually a, um, a conversation online about these small hubs using big wheels. One bloke wanted to know if the bigger ones would fit on his XW. And they, they do, because this car came with them. Um, now I used to do the road this for a prestige car outlet in Blackburn, and I would always knock things like that back because I know they're not the right... If it had the wrong wheels, I'd always be very, very wary of it because it's my signature on the bottom of the roadworthy. Another reason is why not just get the right wheels for the car. That's the way Ford intended it to be. Because the other ones, I think, with the gap all the way around, the hub looks shit out. Um, at the end of the day, Vic roads go in and out of different things. At one point, um, even mild sandblasting in the swept vision of a uh, windscreen was an instant failure. And that's why we always used to get new screens in them. Now it's more about structure as well. Um, and any car that's had the parcel tray cut for speakers is an instant failure because you're cutting into the structure. So it all depends on who tests the car 
and um, whether or not they're prepared to, to, to risk it, because they are audit and it's all photographic now. They take photographs of all the work. Now they're the handbrake cables. These handbrake cables are in great condition. I'm just going to make a bit of a spruce up with paint. The other thing we want to do is we just want to tie it off with a bit of uh, wire because that's what Ford used to do. Just going to pull that out. And put a new banjo bolt on with two shiny new copper washers. It's actually hard with the camera, the camera's actually in the way. Last but not least are these little, I think they're anti-rattle springs that go over the foot of the caliper. They're a bit of a pain to put into the camera here, but I'm going to try. I'm just going to stick it this way first so there's no tension on it. There we go. All finished. So I'll do those um, tie rod ends now. Just to give it a good swing, lock to lock, make sure the brake cables and so forth or brake lines aren't binding. It's all turning freely. We're good to go. So now I've got to talk about these. Basically tie rod ends and the little tie bar there for adjusting your toe in. Uh, these cars use two different drag links, the XW. This is an early XW, it's 1969. And so it uses a different type of taper. Um, the early ones are 7 16th, the later ones are half inch. And I think the later ones came in with the big heavy Clevelands to beef up the front a little bit. But the whole thing means that this assembly this whole tie rod assembly is going to be a hybrid because we've got the early type drag link up there here if you can see it there and of course we've got the latest stub axles and I think I mentioned in the other videos I'm not sure the early stub axles had the small center or the small axle the um, late XY to late XB used a bigger one which is what this car has and then of course late XB I think in about October 75 or so they went to the big one which has the big center which went right through to XF so we've had to use different <coughs> different ends um, so we'll stick those on now five six seven Well, I've had a couple of setbacks. I'm not happy with these uh, inner tie rod ends. There's not enough thread poking through uh, where the nylock nut is. That's the second set I've had. I've loosened them um, since I put them in. And also, this spring saddle here is not quite seated at the bottom, which means the shock absorber is sitting right over. And uh, maybe that's because I need to put the engine in first and get a bit of weight there. But I need to rectify that as well, because uh, that is indeed disconcerting. So the next video is going to be all about uh, setting these rear brakes up. Um, also, we've got to bleed the brakes. Now, everything in this car has been replaced as far as the brakes are concerned. So the first thing is we've got to charge the lines first, which means uh, filling it up, pumping it through to the furthest point, which is left-hand rear, then right-hand rear, then left-hand front, then right-hand front. Um, and then we give it a final bleed. And after that, this car will go from being a lovely XW shell to a 351 Falcon with no doors and glass. See you later.